In the previous video, I went through a real quick run-through of getting the achievement home and away while starting as France, but here I'm going to go more step-by-step, step. and I wanted to go over why I picked France as the nation to start with. And the reason being is it's really easy to beat all the nations around you, especially England from the start. And typically the experience with playing this game is it, it's very hard to land troops in mainland England because of the English Navy. So the way around that was in the, the first few wars with England, when I occupied these provinces in mainland France, I simply asked for Dublin. And typically you can't ask for a province without occupying any forts in the area. So the way the war goes with England is you occupy all the forts in Normandy and Gascony, and England is perfectly willing to give away those provinces, but you can't land any troops in England without the English Navy stopping you. So you, it's very difficult to ask for any provinces in England proper. But Dublin doesn't have a fort, which means that you could completely beat England in mainland France, and rather than ask for your French territories back, you could ask for Dublin, and then in a subsequent war attack England. And so, once in Dublin, you can chain your wars, you can then attack Ulster, which should be a complete pushover. They may have allied a few of these other Irish minor nations, but they're usually pretty easy to beat. Worst case scenario, they might be allied to England, but you can, you can still attack them. Uh, or if they've got another ally, you can attack that ally, and they'll call in Ulster in a defensive war. Once you've beaten Ulster, you can then attack Scotland, and you will need your navy to have naval superiority to be able to cross from Ulster to Scotland, but that shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, and then once you've got Scotland, you can start parking troops along this border, and then it's real easy to invade England by land. You'd, their navy becomes totally irrelevant. And I have tried this as Castile and Aragon, and my thinking was if I could get a personal union over Navarra, after Navarra made a claim in Laborde, but before France actually attacked England, I could uh, then fight this war against the English and ask for Dublin. Unfortunately, Dublin is outside the Corian range. Even if you were to give Labard to Navarra, it's still outside the Corian range. So that's why I picked France. And uh, you, you can take this game at a nice leisurely pace. There are only a few cities you need to get. Um, Paris, London, Lothian... Rome and Dublin, um, and France is situated right in the middle of all these required provinces. So I didn't try to do anything fancy in this game, I just um, spread around Europe. I got some colonial nations in Louisiana and North America and Brazil, and um, at one point I dismantled the Holy Roman Empire and I got Persians over Poland, Lithuania, and Scandinavia. But I didn't try to, like, go for a world conquest or anything. This was a pretty leisurely game. And eventually you'll want to release Wales. And you'll want to give yourself 15 or 20 years because uh, it, it'll take you a few years to integrate Wales. What you'll want to do is you'll release them and they'll get these cores. And then you'll want to grant them the other provinces they need. And what I thought at first was, okay, I'll just grant them London, Rome, um... Paris, you know, their their coring range would allow for that, but unfortunately you can only grant provinces that are adjacent to other provinces. So, uh, for example, to get to Rome, I had to start from Picardy, grant all these provinces in a string, get down to Sardinia, and then grant them Rome, and then I kind of had to do the same thing around here. So, uh, and once you release a vassal, you have to wait at least 10 years to reintegrate them. I don't think Liberty Desire would be an issue here, uh, because you, the, the Liberty Desire can go away from granting provinces, and that does wear off over time, but over a 10 year period, it won't really matter. Uh, you will want to get as much Diplo Reputation as you can. I was able to have 10 Diplo Reputation despite um, having the Occupation of Rome penalty, which subtracts one. That was through a combination of ideas and policies and having an advisor that really bumped up my uh, Diplo rep. And so even though this Welsh vassal was about 400 development, it only took about four years to reintegrate them. So after a 10-year waiting period, that was about 14 years total. You'll want to give yourself 15 or 20 years just in case. You could also, when the Protestant Reformation starts, you can turn Protestant, and then it won't matter that you've got the occupation of Rome. So I went ahead and did that. I reintegrated 
whales, and then I released them as a subject again. And as you can see here, I was able to get the achievement. And uh, I'm trying to think of a way that Paradox would uh, would nerf this, because sometimes when there's a, an achievement that's too easy to get, they try to make it more difficult. And one way they might do that is require you to start as England in order to get the achievement. Um, in which case, it would be a little bit harder, but with the English events and ideas, you can get a personal union over France early in the game. It is harder to do, uh, but there's a real good video on Arumba's channel that... Uh, would tell you how to do that. So uh, that sums up this video, and thank you for watching.